Ask me and I will play so sweetly I'll make you smile. Something about you isn't right I swear you can make me lose my mind Lying here awake at night This is that love you would really adore And it's a funky elephant Oh no, you're doing another sponsored I video <laughs> so complicated I'm sick and tired of contemplating I don't want She's just like mom, she would just give everything to me and the cook, she especially liked cooking for them. I can't be the one you keep running to whenever you feel down. I can't be that someone will always be there. Did you see this picture of your Uncle Max? I can't rely on you now. I can't rely on you anymore. I can't depend. Everybody, thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi today. I hope you had a good, safe summer week. I had a very emotional and dramatic week, and I want to share my week with you. My ex-husband Johnny came up from Tennessee, and we had a very meaningful visit. And I've been thinking a lot about why are people in our lives for the amount of time that they are. Why do some people just seem to pass through? Maybe they're with us a few years, maybe even a decade, but then they're gone. Why is it that other people are with us forever? What is it that makes sense of that? So that's what I've been thinking about this week, and that's what I want to talk about. That's what I want to share with you. I've come to some conclusions, and then I want to know your conclusions. Why is it that we spend our lives in the, in the comfort of knowing that someone is going to always be there while we get used to that ritual of saying goodbye? Desi? Desi, come here. Desi, come here. Why do we bond with people so strongly and yet others, we try and try to form that bond, but it never happens. What is that? And what is a bond anyway? I've been doing way too much thinking about this. But I've come to the conclusion that when we form, or at least when I form a deep bond with someone, the number one thing that I keep going back to is trust. That bond is strengthened and is unbreakable because of the trust that I have in that person that I have bonded with and they trust me back. It's so much more than just trust, though. I trust all the people in my life, but I don't have a deep bond with all of them. I think for the person that stays in my life forever, the one thing they have in common is I don't know where, where I end and they begin, and perhaps vice versa. We complete each other. I know it's corny, but it's true. I see myself through their eyes, and I like what I see. It's special. It's a bond. It's a connection. There, there aren't even any words for that feeling of comfort. You know, perhaps when you're alone in a crowded room and you look down the aisle and you see that person that you have that bond with, that person that's been in your life forever, and how do you feel? like everything is right with the world. That's what, that's what I think a bond is, at least to me. Uh, you're not a 
Sometimes I think of people in my life, like the plants that I've put in my garden. When I think about the people that mean so much to me in my life, the people that have been with me forever, the one thing they all have in common is they challenge me and they allow me to challenge them. When they ask me what I think they should do, I tell them the truth. I don't lie. There, there's something inside me that wants to warn them or protect them. I have no time to tell them what I think they might want to hear just to be polite or kind or encouraging. No, I don't feel that way at all. I challenge them. I tell them the truth. And I love that, that I get that back. If I ask their advice, they give it to me straight. Then sometimes it hurts. There, there's nothing more risky than telling somebody you love the absolute truth. And I think that's why when I look out sometimes and I, I, I try to see the people that have come and gone in my life, it starts to make sense to me. I, I understand it now. When I have someone that I love so much say to me, Sue, I think you were wrong. I think you should make the first move. I think you should call the doctor. I think you're worrying about nothing. I think you're being wonderful. <laughs> I just want the truth. And I know when I ask them, they're going to give it to me straight. And that seems to be an unbreakable part of the bond that I have with people that have been with me forever. How about you? When you get older, things become so much clearer. But for everything that we love in our life or every person that we love, there will come a moment of truth. And there's no warning to it. It's just you're in it and there's a moment of truth. And either that person is going to hightail it out of your life and abandon you or they will stand tall with you no matter what. They'll be there for you. It is the moment of truth. I'm thinking of two people here. One is a friend that I had that was best friends with my ex-husband, Ed, and he was so close to Ed. And when Ed and I divorced, he felt it best not to talk to me. And even though we were so close and we had so much fun together and so much in common. He decided in that moment of truth, he would no longer be my friend. And around that time, I started to put two and two together that there will come a time in, in every person's life where something like this might happen. The other moment of truth is about John, my ex-husband, who was here visiting. And about 12 years ago, I got kicked to the curb. I've told you this story many times before, but everything went wrong. Car accident, my mother died, my husband filed for a divorce. I was in bad shape and I had to move. And I was in a lot of trouble. My son was out of town. I, I really had nobody. And, and John came up from Tennessee. And he helped me pack. And he lent me money. And there was a mix-up with the electric company. So he drove me way out on 36th Street. And we waited in line for hours to catch up on that bill so I could move into my new apartment that was more affordable. And we 
worked on moving day after day and he was there for me. What did he get out of that? This was my moment of truth. This was the lowest point of my entire life. And it's amazing how some friends disappeared, didn't seem to know my name anymore. But John was there. And I remember the day that I moved and I was crying a bit and he had Cooper in his car and my accent, you know, he's not that crazy about dogs, but Cooper was in the back and he was more than happy to move us over to the new apartment. And the movers didn't put my bed together and there's Johnny's putting my bed together. And what, it, what was in it for him? Nothing. Nothing. Why would he come up from Tennessee? to help his ex-wife after all these years. What's in it for him? Love. We love each other. We'll always love each other. We have survived that test of time. We have survived that moment of truth and everybody has that moment of truth. And some will say, oh, I can't believe you're friends with your ex-husband. Yeah, I think it's more than friends. Yeah, we share a son, we share grandchildren, but we were just kids when we met. I was 16 years old when he first walked me home. People grace our life for such a short period of time, but in that time, some of the things they teach us perhaps is invaluable. All the visits that I've had with Johnny over the years, this last one is the one that will be in my heart forever. It was his birthday and his sister lay dying in the hospital. The pain was something like, I think I've never experienced before. It hurt so bad to lose Jan. And knowing how much it hurt him hurt me. The Sunday before John's sister died, he turned 74. And we spent the day with our grandchildren and I never thought we would actually have a chance to do this, but he came in and he seemed to enjoy my house so much and he seemed so proud of me. And the tables had so turned where he wasn't helping me. I had a chance to help him, to help him cope with the death of his sister. We had a dinner with our mutual friend Barb and her husband. Now these were high school friends of ours, but very, very close high school friends. Barb dated his brother, Max. And we sat there at my son's restaurant and Devin was there and we looked at old pictures and we reminisced. And it was beautiful. It was like magic. It was it was bonding, it was challenging, it was, it was standing the test of time, it was everything, it was beautiful. And the one thing that I'll always remember is that nothing washes love away. Like those little benches that I bought last week where perhaps a grandfather etched the names of his grandkids in the benches and they ended up at a thrift store where I bought them. That reminded me that love, it goes on forever. It never washes away. It, it never ceases to go on and touch other people's lives. Love is forever. And it's something that we hold dear. 
and it makes us whole. So, through the sorrow and the devastation of losing such a beautiful woman as John's sister, Jan, who spent her whole life doing things for other people, who was raising her grandson, who is a great artist, he's 12 years old, and she gave him the tools to be the artist that he will be someday. We mourn her and we celebrate her. And not even death can stop all that love. This picture of your Uncle Max. Staying at home, turn off the phone, I will listen to you. Hey everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I loved every minute of this video and I so hope you got something out of it. And if you get time below, could you maybe share why you think some people have gone in and out of your life? Next week, I'm going to take you on a little tour of my city. It's about time. And the downtown area is so pretty. So I want to show you that and maybe throw in a few surprises. But please have yourself a happy, safe summer week. And when you're done with your week, you come back and see me and Desi, okay? All right. It's a deal. We'll be here. Stay in the home. Turn off the phone, I will listen to you. And then look at you showing me the bird. Yeah, where's the bird? Where's the bird? Where's the bird? Right there. Oh, there's the bird. <laughs> and whisper your words like secrets written in an old moleskin. And look up above. Sunlight seems like it is gone.